a busy week for you. We've got two fighters on this card, Macy Barber, and of course, half of the co-main event, Clay Guida. And man, I, I was thinking this week, it's so crazy. This is his 59th pro fight, but yet he's still such, he's still such a fan favorite. Like there's just something about him that people want to watch. Yeah, I feel like, you know, energy is contagious and Guida is that guy. Yeah. He brings great energy everywhere he goes. He's like the guy to go to if you want to learn how to live life to the fullest. I mean, he, he's got it down pat and that's contagious and I think people uh, are drawn to that. What do you feel like has been the key to his longevity, I guess, and not just longevity, because it's not just the fact that he's still fighting, he's still getting better, honestly, at, at 40 years old now. You know, I think the white belt mentality, just having an open mind, uh, you know, he and I have been friends forever and he calls me coach all the time, which yeah. is hilarious to me, but uh, you know, just, that's one thing in the PMA, positive mental attitude. That guy has a great attitude and he's optimistic about things and, and takes the, the, the downturns and, and turns them into to good energy. And I think that's, that's probably the key. And, and, and then he surrounds himself and, and part of a great culture in our team. Is this matchup in particular something that kind of gets him going? Because it's like an opportunity for him to kind of go, okay, young gun, okay, Claudio Poyas, not your time yet. Yeah, and he actually, you know, after a, I think a couple fights back was like, hey, Sean Shelby, give me some of these young bucks. Give yeah. me some of the, the, the young up and challenge. He, he likes to challenge himself, and, and he's definitely got a challenge here. This guy's a dangerous guy. He's got some nasty kicks and stand-up and some great jiu-jitsu, so Guida's definitely going to be tested. For sure. And then, of course, you also have Macy Barber, who's kind of the other end of the spectrum, right? A young, up-and-coming fighter. But I was really interested to see this week how she was open about how – She's already had so many up and downs in, in her young career, and it's been tough for her, really. What kind of advice do you, and maybe even Clay, give someone like Macy, now that she's part of Team Alpha Male, that she can have that, not just a long career, but you know, a meaningful career? You know, the biggest thing is just internalizing, looking inside, because she's been to a lot of great camps, really great camps with coaches that are great, uh, and just understanding that she needs to find a place that's comfortable, that's positive, and then know that the real battle's internal, yeah. and then she needs to add the weapons to what she already believes. And she's uh, somebody that is up early in the morning talking to mind coaches. She's always asking for extra uh, little tips and dissecting things. I mean, she's a real professional, and I think she's gonna really show it. Well, speaking of weapons, I mean, she's been with you guys, what, maybe a year and a half, two years now? And what, you know, what are some of the biggest evolutions that you've seen in her game? Because she's got a tough test in Montana De La Rosa. Um, you know, she's always been pretty well rounded. It's just, you know, rounding that out. I've got some things specifically that I think are higher level wrestling things that will play well into this fight. Uh, and she's got great coaches with Danny Castillo and the rest of the guys, uh, Joey Rodriguez and Guillerme. So um, just sharpening what she's got. She's, mm -hmm. she's a, in this fight in particular, a faster fighter in my opinion and, and a lot more fluid. Del Rose is gonna try to grab her and, and slow her down. And so we're just aware of that and gonna have a great game plan. It's funny kind of making this walk with you because as we were walking, I was thinking, man, I wonder if he's made this walk more as a fighter or more as a coach. Because I know you had a lot of fights, you fought a long time, but you've also cornered a lot of people. Yeah, no, I've, I've done that throughout my career. Yeah. I mean, before I was even, anybody knew who I was, I was cornering, you know, Scott Smith and James Irvin. That big comeback from Scott Smith where he got the body shot and knocked out Pete. So I was in the corner for that back in the day. And, um, I think it's probably probably pretty close because we've got a lot of great coaches at the the team. The team we share responsibilities. Okay. It's definitely a lot more nerve wracking being in the corner than it is actually fighting because you don't have control. And there's guys that I haven't been nervous for, and then most of the time you have a little nerves for the the guy you're coaching. So you get a little nervous, a little even bit. still, a little bit as a cornerman. Yeah, as a cornerman, yeah. more so than actually fighting. Let's take a walk up into the octagon real quick. Okay. When you uh, when you walk in here, do you get any sort of like energy? You get any feeling well, in here? Well, <laughs> it's definitely a familiar place, that's for sure. But uh, you know, it's a mixed bag of tricks. Sometimes I get in here and I'm like, ah, I, I need to be in here doing my thing. And then sometimes I'm just thankful that I'm not. And, and same when I'm watching fights. I'll watch a fight and be like, man, I wish I was in there mixing it up. And then there's fights where I'm like, oh, thank thank goodness I'm not in there mixing it up. But I don't know, you know, uh, I'm coming up on. It would be a 20 year mark if I were to take another fight. It'd be 20 years as a competitive fighter, as a, as a professional fighter. So that, yeah, that gets a little tempting. It's a nice round number. Do you have any, anybody in mind? 
Well, you know, I think Cub might be getting cold feet on actually making the weight cut, probably not on, on having the fight. But he called me out and said that I was his dream fight and, and he wanted to go down to 135. So if Cubby wants to tango, I mean, I love, I love Cub Swanson, but I think that's a fight that kind of slipped away from both of us. So I'd be interested in that for sure. Well, maybe we can find a catch weight. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a matchmaker, but that fight <laughs> needs to happen. I would love 140 that. 140 pounds, i do that. The fans would love it. Hey, we just did it. We just got a fight going. Congratulations. No, <laughs> no thank you so much for taking a second. I know you got a busy day, so appreciate it. My pleasure. Absolutely. Enjoy the fights. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.